students seem to have had a little bit of confusion in this conversion specifiers. So in order to clarify any kind of doubts regarding the use of conversion specifiers like percentage D, percentage F, percentage C, percentage S, I thought let me create an actual program, try to run it and explain to you how the conversion specifiers work in the printf statement. So let's take a look at one or two printf statements at a time. I have declared an integer variable a of the type short. It's a short int a and its value is 100. So what I am doing is I am trying to print this short, okay. One as a normal short integer, one as a octal and one as a hexadecimal number. Then in the next stage what I am doing is I am doing it as percentage minus 6hi. Once the output comes, I'll explain to you what that minus means and write justified is plus 6hi. So what we shall do now is we shall attempt to run this particular program and then I shall go ahead to explain this output to you. All right. So now if you take a look at this particular output, okay, you can see that based on the printf, okay, it has printed short as 100, octal as 144 and hex as 64. Now what needs explanation is when this fellow is printed left justified and right justified. So what do you mean by left justified is if you take a look at this fellow here, after the equal to I have percentage minus 6hi. So here immediately it has printed 100 and you can see the comma after the i. So if you count the number of spaces after 100 you will see that 1, 2 and 3 spaces are left. That means it's saying in a width of 6 print the number short with going towards the left side or moving towards the left. That's why it has printed 100 and the right side are left blanks because 100 is left justified. Now what I have done is I have printed HI. Okay, percentage 6 HI. HI stands for the conversion specifier of short integer data type. So now when I write justify it, 100 is printed in a width of 6 but the first three spaces are left as blanks. One, two and three. So first three are left as blank. Fourth is one, fifth is zero and sixth is zero. So in a total width of six spaces, the first three are blank and the last three are the numbers. So in left justified, the number will be printed and the blanks will be to the right. In right justified, the blanks will be to the left and the number will be printed to the right. So I hope this clarifies your understanding on the working of the percentage h i. Now what we'll try to do is we'll try to take a look at some other numbers which are being printed. So let me just put this off here and take out this comment from here. All right. So now what I'm going to do here is I shall comment out the name so that we can focus on only on the integer sorry only on the floating point data type. So I have defined float c as 12345.167890F. Internally, 167890 will not exactly be stored as that. It will be an approximation because in maths, you know, real numbers are merely an approximation when represented internally. So, first, when I print percentage F, this it will print 12345. Then, after the decimal places, it will print six characters of the decimal places based on what values it uses to represent 167890 internally. This f indicates that this particular fellow is a floating point or real number. If I fail to put the f, then this constant ends up becoming a double type of data by default. Now, let's run this and then I shall go ahead with my explanation. Okay. So here you can take a look at this. So when I'm printing this as without any percentage 6.2, 8.2 and so on, you can see that it's printing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's printing 1, 6, 7 and internally 8, 9, 0 has been represented as 9, 6, 9. That is the approximation of 8, 9, 0. So this complete float has been printed like this. 
Now what I am doing here is in the next step I have a number 123.55 so it is totally how many 3 plus 2 5 and 1 so it has 6 width that is including the decimal point it is occupying 6 spaces so what I have said here is percentage 8 means in a width of 8 that is including the decimal points okay I want after the decimal places 2 digit accuracy so 123 0.55 is going to be printed as 123.55 but if you see here since the width was 8 these are just 5 characters so to the right of 123 you will see okay you will see what you will see 2 characters spaces because this is 123 is 3 characters dot is the fourth 5 5 and 5 5 are 2 characters so 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 3 6 6 plus 2 8 because I specified the width as 8 the point 2 indicates after the decimal places round it up with accuracy up to 2 digits. Now I have given a width of 6 but this number 12345.167 is more than 6 digits. So it will in, in ignore this 6 width specification. It will only focus on the point 3 part. So after the decimal place it will round out 1678 becomes 167. 8 because 7 8 is equal to almost 8 so it will print this as 12345.168 that's why this point sorry this should go off that's why this percentage 6.3 stands for that means I have given a width of 6 but since the width is more than 6 characters it has ignored the 6 part and only after the decimal place it has rounded off this number from 167890 to 168.8 and it has printed it. Now the last one where most of you seem to be having a confusion. When I am printing this, I am printing it in the exponent format. Now think of it, if I say it 120, I can also say it as 1.2 into 10 raised to the power of 2. So E stands for the 10th power or the exponent. So when I am representing this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so when I say 6.3 E, it is going to convert it into one point. 235 so this is 1. 1. 2, 3, 4, 5 has become 1.234 sorry 1.23 and 4 5 has been rounded so it's become 1 2 3 5 e raised to 0 4 because if you see the decimal places after 1 2 3 and 4 so between 1 and 2 you have the decimal place that's why you have the exponent e stands for the power of 10 so in maths if you had to convert this into the power of 10, you would have written it as 1.235 into 10 to the power of 4. So instead of 10, you have the value E. So I hope this clarifies your understanding of the floating point format when I'm using it in the exponential style. Now what we'll do is we'll try to comment out this part. Okay. So we just comment out this part and then try to run this remaining part. All right. Now what I am doing is I am printing the name using a width of 15. That means there is a box of 15 places. When I am doing 15 yes, let's see what the name looks like. The name is Arzun Z. Just a name I have just given so that I can just show you the output. Okay, there is some error somewhere. Alright. So the error is on which line? Line 16. Alright. So I should not have taken it here and so I should take it here and let's see if this error goes off okay there's a comment started I should remove this particular comment okay now I hope we should be okay yeah now it looks okay but let's run and see what happens okay now if you see with this 15 yes the name automatically has left extra spaces to the left so if you look at Arjun Z it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so it will have left 5 spaces to the left side 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so you can see the 5 spaces okay I have given a space after this let me tighten this up so that we can count the spaces correctly let's run this okay so now if you see you will after the equal to it is 1 2 sorry 1 2 3 4 and 5 so now you can see 5 spaces before whereas in this fellow you will have 5 spaces to the right which unfortunately I can't show you. So minus makes it left justified whereas with 
normal percentage 15 years the characters are printed right justified so if you put the minus you're going on the left justified so i hope this clears your understanding of the conversion specifiers please take this program i'm keeping it in the description section of this video as a text file download it play around with it so that you really understand how the conversion specifiers work play around with the width change the width from 8.2 to 8.3 Okay, make it 6.4, see what happens. Make this 9.3, 9.2, see what happens. So once you play around, you will get a clear idea of how these conversion specifiers work.